Hey, what's up, everybody? Patrick Bryant here. I'm gonna go over adding color to our grayscale images today, and I'll try to quickly go over a few techniques. Um, one that I mainly use, and a couple I've discovered just um, through basically experimenting, watching other tutorials and stuff like that. So we'll get started here. We are in Photoshop, and I've got my sketch of my dude here, monster guy with a uh, little trophy on his neck. So here's the first technique and what I found to be pretty pretty quick and sort of a simplified way. Like I said, there are many different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. So uh, let's go over one of them here. So got my sketch layer. First thing you want to do is duplicate this layer, dragging it down to the layer tab. That duplicates it right here on top, layer to copy. I'm going to take the opacity down to about 70 or so percent. It's pretty random, doesn't need to be exact. I'm going to change the uh, layer mode to multiply. Alright, so now I'm going to make a new layer that sits in between my two grayscale images. And here we're just going to start adding some color. So I've got sort of a random blue here. And we're just going to start filling in. Now, the cool thing about having your image rendered first in grayscale is, and you're using this technique or just about any other technique to add color, is that the grayscale image is going to give you different values and different shades of your, in this case, blue. And you can see I'm just roughly doing this. You don't need to be exact. Cleanup work can always be done later. And we've got our multiply grayscale layer on top where we can still see our line work. What we do later. So here's the blue I selected and our grayscale image is giving us different values of this blue, which is pretty cool. Get a light, and we can always add white if we want to go lighter. But <clears throat> got some different shadings already happening just by adding this color, this layer here of just some colors, just painting right over our original grayscale sketch. Now you can adjust this if you don't like it. You can say, ah, eh, maybe I want a different type of blue or whatever. Go to image adjustments, hue saturation. And in here, we can just adjust the hue, and we can do just about whatever we like. Make it lighter, make it darker, whatever. Let's see, okay. And on our multiply layer that we turn the opacity down some, we can make it lower, we can turn it up, maybe get a little bit more contrast and you can kind of just play around. Now, nothing's really changed from our original. We still have our original grayscale sketch. We completely screw up and we just throw this stuff away. No big deal. Now, whatever type of process you decide to use, you know, this isn't the end. You know, we still have some painting to do. Uh, you can also add in some different colors um, along on this painted layer. We want to add in some green. And it's sort of a fun way to just kind of play around with some ideas that pretty quickly. And like I said, you don't like it, you can adjust it, throw the layer away, start over. We can add in some, some red and around the nose, around the cheeks area, whatever. So this is going to work as a guideline for when we go to our layer in which we're going to paint and render this further to take it up to a higher level. Now, <clears throat> I use this technique for this guy. So, if this is a level that you want to bring it of detail, you want to bring it up to, you know, let's say this guy is in a book of uh, like an RPG type book for characters or whatever. This is this, uh, I use this process for this guy, along with a little bit of a mixture of another, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But once you sort of gotten this sort of colors that you like, you've mixed it in, you like it, you're like, okay, cool, this is the color of our little monster dude we're going to have. Now, we want to make a layer on top of our 
multiply grayscale layer and here is where we're going to be doing our render so pressing down the alt key I'll go over painting and brushes and stuff like that in another tutorial but pressing down the alt key makes you gives you a color picker and if you've watched different videos you constantly see this thing flashing and that's what the artist is doing and this is how you start blending in your different colors and we've got our little different values of green that are created by our grayscale image we can always color pick in different areas whatever but this isn't about blending your painting but you can see the effect that just adding the color on that one layer can do for you and you can start painting pretty quickly and the reason why you may see a lot of different artists paint their images in grayscale is because sometimes thinking about what color you want something to be you kinda get stuck for a while, you kinda get hung up on well if I had just started this and completely rendered this out in this blue color now let's say you're working for a client or an art director who's changed his mind and says oh we need to change this completely to orange you know what do you do now what and there's different ways you can you know correct that or make adjustments to it but starting an image out in grayscale sort of just gives you the freedom to get started on a painting without getting hung up too hung up on what's going on with color so this you just continue to blend and you just continue to paint so that is one technique and so I'll go over here quickly again we had our grayscale image duplicated that image change it to multiply and turn the opacity down to about 70 75 percent that numbers vary up in the air you can pick whatever you want make a new layer in between those two layers and start adding color bing that's it so let me show you another type of technique that is a little bit of an older one that I used and don't use it really much anymore but uh, let's see and for this one, okay, you got your grayscale image and you make a layer right on top of it and fill it all in. Okay, and you're probably wondering, dude, what the heck is going on? But don't worry. You probably already know I'm going to do. Take that and this this layer mode, by the way, is on normal. Didn't change the multiplier or anything. You've got a color and turn the opacity down and voila, there's our grayscale image. Now the one thing about this is that it gets very desaturated with this technique. Now that's okay depending on the look you're going for. <clears throat> but once you adjust this opacity, it gets kind of tricky going in here and adding some different colors. And this was something I experimented, along, experimented with, actually with some different types of draw, drawing. And this works for certain types of paintings. But it's a little bit different, but you still see the effect. Still got your grayscale image, all right? And we're adding some color. And this is just on this layer that's had the opacity adjusted down to about 76%. And what you would do is make a layer on top, and this is where you would do all your rear render. Similar effect, um, you know, it's all right. You know, if you like it, no big deal. I think it's a little more work you have to do, but nevertheless, it is just another option, another way you can add some color to an already grayscale render so that's one way another fun thing you can also do is going back to my layer here where I filled this color in and adjusted the opacity is you can sort of fill it with some type of gradient just picking some colors here at random
Oops, I forgot to do something. Sorry about that. Okay, so whatever. You can do something like that. Just a fun, easy way. And still go in and paint. Now that's, you know, some people use this for certain things. You still are establishing some different values and color ranges of different colors. So it's cool. It can work. Um, it's just another option for you. Just to sort of play around with. And still you can go in here and paint. All of this stuff can be whatever, still rendered. Still have your sketch in the middle. I like the first option better, but hey, that's me. All right, and last but not least, for something like um, let's see here. This is uh, just some concept work done using the silhouette technique, and I'll go over that in another tutorial. But for something like this, this is good enough for for what it is. If you want to take this over to the art director or whatever, who just wanted some concepts of some different types of characters, okay, and Usually this type of stage is done, this is a very early concept stage and usually this is done in grayscale pretty much all the time. But if you want to add some color to it just for fun, um, I'm going to make a new layer on top of everything and change its mode to color. And I'm just going to roughly add in some color just on the top of this guy's um, robe here just for effect and this doesn't have to be done on a painting like this but you can do it if you want you know, maybe a little more pop add some little color here around his runes on his staff here and it can make it a little appealing so for something like this I would use the color layer And that's just to add something in. It's just to highlight a certain area of a character, but still maintaining that concept sketch, the initial concept concept sketch feel. Excuse me. So, um, and either way, if I wanted to, if your art director or your client or you yourself want to take this further and say, you know what, I just like this guy. The sketch came out cool. I love it. Um, I would make a new layer on top of that color layer and what I would do is then start getting more refined with my render and clean all this up but as you can see that initial grayscale sketch you know I've got some texture going on I've got some different values going on and it was all pretty much done in one stroke, just throw some color on there real quick and just keep moving. So don't get too caught up into gosh, I don't know what color I want this character to be. I've got this awesome idea about this guy. Paint it in grayscale. Not an issue. Not at all. And this took me a while to learn and discover. And for people out there, depending on your level of where you're at. And for people out there who I'm sure are 10 times better than me as an artist, maybe discover this early on. I discovered this very, pretty late. And like I said, I started painting about a year and a half ago. And I just jumped into color right away. And then eventually learned this sort of style of adding color to a grayscale in there. So there you have it. Uh, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, see you guys in future tutorials, and watch, subscribe, and um, see you guys soon, later.